finance minister, ministers are often poised very hard choices, but seldom on matters of life and death. On behalf of all the ministers attending, let me start by expressing my deepest sympathy with the citizens and the member states hit by this crisis and a deep felt gratitude to, for all those risking their health to save lives. We will protect our citizens and our currency. Come what may and with everything we have got. Our commitment to provide support in this time of need is unlimited. We will do whatever it takes and more to restore confidence and support a rapid recovery. Whatever further coordinated and decisive policy is needed, we stand ready to take it. This includes fiscal measures to support growth and employment. We are working on the necessary measures needed to help the economy rebound. Today, we have put together a first set of national and European measures while setting a framework for further action to respond to a rapidly evolving crisis. The total fiscal support to the economy will be very significant. In addition to our powerful automatic stabilizers, the combined fiscal measures at national and European level amount to about 1% of GDP on average, and the combined liquidity measures to around 10% of GDP. Liquidity measures are mostly comprised of public guarantee schemes and deferred tax payments. Let me go into more detail now on the measures taken. First, member states are taking strong action to support healthcare systems and to contain the virus. They will also provide liquidity support to firms and support affected workers. Measures are tailored to the needs and circumstances of each individual member state. Second, coordinated efforts at the European level will complement national measures. We welcome the Corona Investment Initiative worth 37 billion euros, which will support healthcare systems, SMEs and the labor market. Another 28 billion euros of structural funds will be made fully eligible for these expenditures. We welcome the initiative of the Commission and the EIB Group to mobilize 8 billion euros of working capital lending backed by the EU budget by enhancing programs for guaranteeing bank credits to SMEs. We also welcome the ongoing efforts to increase this amount to up to 20 billion euros. We also welcome the package of monetary policy measures taken by the ECB last week, aimed at supporting liquidity and funding conditions for households, businesses, and banks. It will help the smooth trans provision of credit to the real economy. And, importantly, it will avoid fragmentation of euro area financial markets to preserve a full transmission of monetary policy. A few words on flexibility. Rules and regulation will support the fight against this disease and the economic fallout. We emphasize today that the Stability and Growth Pact has all the flexibility needed to cater for this situation. And we will use it so that we can take the far-reaching measures needed to fight this crisis. We welcome the Commission guidance on the scope for supporting firms that is available within state aid rules. The Commission will approve additional measures needed to remedy the serious disturbance in the economy, which is already the case for Italy and increasingly across the European Union. The banking system has a key role in preventing this health emergency from morphing into a social and economic crisis for our citizens. We welcome the statement by the European Banking Authority to make full use, where appropriate, of the available flexibility to support the banking sector. In particular, we also welcome the decisions taken by ECB Banking Supervision 
providing temporary capital and operational relief to euro area banks. All the resources available at EU level must be mobilized to fight this crisis. All institutions will participate in our collective effort to defeat this virus. In this context, I have also asked the Commission and the ESM to explore ways within their mandate to address the challenges posed by the coronavirus. Let me close this topic by stressing that this is the first step and the Eurogroup will continue to follow the situation very closely and stand ready to act swiftly. We have agreed to follow up with regular calls at least once a week. We will continue to act swiftly and decisively to developments as they unfold. Today, ministers also agreed to very briefly review a few other pending issues in our agenda, namely ESM treaty reform and enhanced surveillance in Greece. On the treaty, back in December, we reached an agreement, in principle, on all elements related to the ESM reform, but, a le but, a left, but left a few legal issues to be clarified. Work done by our deputies clears up our remaining open issues. I am confident that we will be able to close this big chapter shortly, also on the so-called amending agreement to the IGA. Our focus is now fully on the coronavirus, and we will thus politically finalize the treaty reforms after the situation eases. A final word on Greece. We shortly discussed the fifth enhanced surveillance report today. We welcome the good progress with reform implementation. Greece has been able to outperform its fiscal targets for the fifth year in a row, reaching a primary surplus of 4% in 2019. We all agree that, of course, Greece will also be able to make full use of the flexibility with the fiscal rules to deal with the consequences of the coronavirus. Let me close this press conference by wishing everyone well. These are extraordinary times in which we must support each other wherever we can, especially to the people and families affected by this disease. I wish you all the strength needed to get through this. Thank you.